Greetings everyone, this is Dr. Abhishek Samdesi and this is going to be the final video of ABG Simplified. This is ABG part 10. In this we will discuss regarding oxygenation and ventilation. So let us have a look at the contents that we will be discussing on. So we will discuss regarding the respiratory failure. In respiratory failure, there are four types of respiratory failure, which is type 1, type 2, type 3 and type 4. In type 1 respiratory failure, we shall discuss regarding the PaO2, P by F ratio and A gradient. All this type 1 respiratory failure will give us an idea regarding the oxygenation status of the patient. So, let's discuss regarding respiratory failure. What is respiratory failure? Respiratory failure is defined as the disorder wherein the lung function is inadequate to meet the metabolic demands of individual and is unable to maintain normal ABG levels in the blood. Let us discuss regarding the types of respiratory failure. There are four types. Type 1 is hypoxemic failure which I will be discussing in detail. Type 2 is hypercapnic Failure. It is because of hypoventilation when carbon dioxide levels are more than 45 mmHg. It is called as type 2 respiratory failure. So, in any ABGs, if patient has respiratory acidosis, it also means that patient along with respiratory acidosis has type 2 respiratory failure. The mechanism which I have discussed in detail in the previous video is hypoventilation. The next type is type 3 respiratory failure where the etiology is post-operative. It is wherein the PaO2 is less than 60 mmHg after procedures. The most common cause being post-surgical, segmental or subsegmental collapse. The last one is type 4 respiratory failure wherein the PaO2 is less than 60 mmHg secondary to any type of shock. Now. Let us discuss in detail regarding type 1 respiratory failure. In type 1 respiratory failure, it is defined as an arterial PaO2 less than 60 mmHg. Type 1 respiratory failure is also called as hypoxemic failure. The mechanism are the following. It can be due to decreased inspired oxygen as in case of high altitude. Other cause is because of hypoventilation as seen in patients with COPD or bronchial asthma and all the other hypoventilation causes which I have mentioned prior. But so any hypoventilation resulting in only hypoxemia but no hypercapnia would be still under type 1 respiratory failure. The other mechanism can be because of impaired diffusion. This impaired diffusion occurs at the alveolo-capillary membrane in cases of ARDS. The other etiology is because of VQ mismatch. There is ventilation perfusion mismatch as in case of pneumonias. Last mechanism is when there is right to left shunt in case of any pulmonary AV malformation or even cardiac shunt defects with reversal of shunt. So, these are the mechanism for the hypoxemic or type 1 respiratory failure. So, let us go about how to assess for type 1 respiratory failure. The following parameter should be looked in ABG to assess the oxygenation status of the patient. The first one being PaO2 that is the partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood. The second component that we have to look for is measure the SaO2 and compare with the SpO2. SaO2 is a saturation of oxygen in arterial blood that is given in your ABG. SpO2 is the saturation of oxygen measured via your pulse oximeter. The third thing you have to do to measure the oxygenation status of the patient is to measure the P by F ratio. Calculate the PaO2 and divide it by FiO2. PaO2 is again the partial pressure of oxygen in arterial blood. FiO2 is the percentage of oxygen that is delivered via your oxygen delivery device or your ventilator. And lastly, you have to measure the AA gradient. 
AA gradient is the difference of the alveolar and arterial oxygen. This gives us an idea regarding any underlying diffusion defect. So, these are the parameters that you are supposed to measure in any given ABG. Let us discuss regarding this one by one. The first one being the PaO2. The normal PaO2 is 80 to 110 mmHg. Whereas, if it is less than 80 to 60, it is called as mild hypoxemia. You will call it as moderate hypoxemia when the PaO2 is between 60 to 40 mmHg. And you will call it as severe hypoxemia when the PaO2 is less than 40 mmHg. The next thing that you have to measure is the SaO2 and compare with the SpO2. Normal SaO2 is usually more than 96. Mild hypoxemia is when the SaO2 is between 90 to 95 percent. You will call it as moderate hypoxemia if the SaO2 is less than 90 percent. Next thing that you have to do is determine one of the most important formulas that we use frequently in ICUs to assess the oxygenation status of any patient that is P by F ratio or PaO2 divided by FiO2. This gives us an idea on oxygenation status of patient by dividing the partial pressure of oxygen which is determined by ABG with the FiO2 provided via your oxygen delivery device. So, the normal P by F ratio is more than 300. Anything between 300 to 200 is mild hypoxemia. Moderate hypoxemia is anything between 200 to 100 and anything less than 100, the P by F ratio of less than 100 is severe hypoxemia. This gives us a fair estimate of oxygenation status of patient who are receiving supplemental oxygen. The next most important formula that we have to apply is the alveolar arterial gradient. It is the difference between the oxygen in the alveolus with the arterial blood. This basically gives us an idea regarding the diffusion status of the underlying lung. The formula for the AA gradient is H divided by 4 plus 4 and the formula is given by subtracting the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli with that of the partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood. The only thing we have to do is to calculate the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli. For this we have a formula PaO2 wherein the capital A stands for the alveolus. So, the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveolus is given by the formula of FiO2 that is the oxygen that is delivered to the patient. This FiO2 you have to multiply with the difference between the atmospheric pressure and the pressure of water. The PATM is the atmospheric pressure of your particular location above the sea level. That has to be subtracted with pH2O which is 47 mmHg. This whole thing you will multiply with FiO2. This you will subtract with PaCO2 divided by the respiratory quotient. PaCO2 is determined with your ABG. So, this entire formula gives you the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli. And to calculate the AA gradient, you have to subtract the alveolar oxygen minus the oxygen determined by your ABG in the arterial blood. So, this brings an end to our discussion on the oxygenation as well as the different type of respiratory failure. These are the references and with this video, we come to an end of the entire section of ABG Simplified. Thank you.